Rick Howard, and I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I'm Mike Carroll. Is that all I say? Michael Sean Carroll. Twenty years ago, I think we might have been on like a uh, on tour. That tour that we went on was like the initial talks of trying to do something different. It was like Javante was on that guy. Oh, was Sheffy on that? Carol. It was a bunch of us. So we're probably in a van somewhere driving through the US having fun. I think 20 years ago we did like a little demo tour around the US. Got the dudes that we knew that were going to ride for girl. We actually had girl shirts screened and we brought them on the trip. I don't know how anyone else felt but I was pretty excited to do something new. Just because the sponsor I had before that was retiring people every video. So I just didn't, you know, I was stressed out every time we'd make a video because someone was re being retired. I was excited just to be pressure free. Or not, not, I wouldn't say pressure free, but just less worrying about my future. You know what I mean? of events over a period of time. I remember like kind of the start of when like Mark left blind and Ternaski having issues. There was just a lot of like chatter and different things going on around that time that like got the conversation going amongst friends and yeah, sparked something together. And I think Spike and Megan were definitely a instrumental part of like, hey, we can dick around and do what we do and this, let's try to do something different, so. Getting sponsored 14, turning pro I think at 16, doing two videos back to back. The first video was fine because it was just all natural. Skaters that you think that were, would be still relevant or just they had a bad year or they weren't into skating one year, you know, or six months or something, you know, they have a retirement part, you know. so. I was talking to Rick and I was just like, I just didn't want to skate like that anymore, feel like that anymore. So, I think he kind of came up with the idea of doing our own thing. I was just like, that's kind of crazy. And starting our own business was just like, I don't. I want to just skate, you know, that's, that's, this is my whole, what I want to do. So, I mean, he's like, don't worry about it. And, Um, they all kind of played a part. Spike was packing international orders. We were, you know, up all day, all night, just doing everything. So it was kind of very little structure, just do, everyone did everything. And it's almost like that to this, to this day, which makes it fun and interesting. But um, Megan, obviously, the backbone to making sure that, you know, the lights are on while we're out there dicking around, so. Carol's the vice president, so that, that'll... <laughs> and I think him and Spike Rochambeau for the titles, because we live by titles here. We love titles. I don't think anything was ever, like, really defined. I think we all had kind of the same vision, like, when it comes to just enjoy yourself. Let's not take ourselves serious. We're not a big deal. Like, let's just have fun. But obviously, yeah, Spike, you know, with the videos, and I think him and Rick, work together a lot on that stuff. Because I wasn't down here, so I mean, they just come up with ideas. So I don't know who actually, maybe one person, maybe both. Sometimes Spike was filming, you know, skating. Like, I remember him filming a line, me in Union Square in San Francisco. But in the first video, we had some other guys come in and film us. But yeah, I wasn't really down here, but it was Rick and Meg, I think, doing a lot of work. Rick and I pretty much probably did everything. The original squad was uh, Javante, Sheffy, Mike, Guy, Rudy, Gavin. Fer Fer was Ferguson the original? I should know that, right? No. <laughs> um, I don't want to leave anybody out. 
Yeah, Guy, Rudy, Sean, Javante, Mike, Tony, um, Eric. How many people is that so far? I'm, who am I missing right now? <laughs> Me, Rick, Javante, Sheffy, Tony Ferguson, Jerron, Rudy, Guy. And Tim wasn't on on until we got on we were on tour. Javante pretty much got him on, I think. I think at the time Tim didn't really show too much enthusiasm in skating. Like he was just I mean he's he's our friend and everything, totally. It just didn't seem like he was that hyped on trying to skate, you know? Um I'm pretty sure that was it. That's all the original. We'll see if I forgot something. Not psyched on us at all. Companies actually kind of try to band together to try to work against us and like stand in the way of making it happen. So that was interesting. We got hit from every angle possible, from like legal stuff to distributors to wood shops. So yeah, they weren't too psyched on us at the time. So the shops were, you know, the kids and completely behind it. But obviously, it was like time in the industry where it was probably only a handful of companies and that was you know so things have changed times have changed peers probably supported us when we did it the way we did it i mean we knew we were quitting it was already in the works when we premiered virtual reality the way skateboarding was back then like if someone found out about it like we would have gotten shut down so quick like rocco was so powerful Everyone was so scared of Rocco. We had to do everything super secretive and not even give a heads up that we were going to quit. I mean, that was just because we knew how ruthless it would have been if, we, you know, that no one would have been cool with it. At the beginning of September, there was a San Francisco contest, and no one knew. And so me and Rick called Ternaski, told him he was cool with it. He just wanted to make sure he still could keep calling on him. We had boards getting made by, or about to get boards made by a certain wood shop, and then that got shut down because someone else threatened. The way we did it was secretively, that there was no resistance or, but I think the person that really supported us the most was um, Fausto Vitella, just in little ways. Like he was always there to help. Like, I don't know, just like, cause he was such a big figure in skateboarding. Like he always just, kind of let us know that he had our back and was there to help out in any way he could. We left for our, our first girl trip. I think Chico showed up and there was no room for him on the tour and I was like, that's fucked up. Like Chico, that's our, that's our buddy. Everyone that didn't fit in the van on that first trip, we ended up doing a uh, chocolate where the, the the buddies that got left behind like were able to connect with them and yeah start chocolate a year later so that was that was fun so chico getting left in the parking lot spark probably sparked that <laughs> i mean one of the main reasons like uh i'm sure maybe rick told you when we took off on that tour before we announced girl chico was at World with his bags packed, ready to go, but he wasn't invited. I mean, not that he wasn't invited, it's just there was no room or whatever, so. But he was just there just hoping to get in, and then it was just sucked driving off and seeing him with his bags. So it was just like you always knew that there's other dudes you wanted to hook up. You want you want to skate with all your friends, travel with all your friends. I think that was always kind of in the back of our heads. We were hoping to have, I think, we were talking to Cream and Shiloh and all that stuff, but not seeing eye to eye or something like that, so Cream and Shiloh didn't get on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, while we started Chocolate Pride, just driving away and seeing Chico getting left behind. Mm -hmm.